Good evening and thank you for joining us. We are proud to present Jackson Stone with Squid. Please give him a warm welcome. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for coming. I know there's a lot of interesting stuff out there, so I appreciate you taking the time to see what we got. Uh, my name is Jackson Stone. I'm a senior software engineer here at uh, Squid. To give you a bit of uh, background about myself, started my career doing uh, gamification research into data visualizations over at Oak Ridge as a young pup. Uh, Chattanooga accepted me to give a talk at their TEDx at a uh, later date. Um, and that got me involved in the startup community, became a web developer. Uh, a few years later, here I am at Squid. If you look closely, you'll see that my uh, fashion sense changes at a glacial pace. Um, OK, so with that, uh, what is Amazon Lex? Uh, it is a chatbot managing service, but you could also look at it as the next step in the evolution of form submission. So what, what do I mean by that? Uh, to go into phase one of this oversimplified history, you have the static form. It was all up front. It was validated on submission. Uh, it was pretty impersonal, and it had serious scaling issues. So you could only populate so many fields in a single web form. Phase two, I'm calling the interactive wizard. Uh, we learned it was better to have it staged, to be validated on input. Uh, it was a lot less gross, still pretty impersonal. And you still had a scaling issue with only being able to add so many stages before your UI became cluttered. What I'm calling phase three are chatbots. These are fluid. Uh, the complexity scales. What I mean by that is you can continue to add capacity to your chatbot, but you have a constant impact in your user interface. Um, you also can do either vocal or textual. Uh, so your users have autonomy there. And it can learn over time. By that, I mean as you're interfacing with your bot, Amazon Lex has the capacity to where it becomes better at recognizing what your users are saying. So uh, how does it work? A, so as I said earlier, a chatbot is really just a new spin on form submission. So what I have on the left are Amazon's terms. What I have on the right are their web analogs, the old web form. So a bot is a collection of forms. An intent is a single form within that collection. So a bot will have many intents. An utterance is how you navigate to the correct form. You can think of this as like a keyword search, uh, but it's a phrase search. Uh, this is the first thing a user says or types into a chatbot. You have slots. These are very similar to input fields. Uh, so a intent will have many slots it is trying to extract from the user. A slot type you can view as an uh, input field type, though the correlation isn't one to one, but it supplies you some validation there. And then you have fulfillment, which is form submission. OK, so you have a choice with chatbots, uh, voice or text. Uh, in many scenarios, voice leads to a better UX, but it is significantly harder to implement from a software development perspective. Uh, text, it's more hands-on, but as far as developers are concerned, it's significantly easier to implement text. These are some gotchas you'll have if you attempt to do voice interactions in your app. I won't go into all of them in detail, but suffice it to say, it's a hard computational problem. Uh, but the voice pros, it's pretty magical. Right? So there, there still is some novelty to communicating with the machine and it responding. Uh, the other advantage is if you've already dug into audio analysis enough to learn about analyzers, nodes, all these things, you're halfway to becoming a novice DJ if you so choose. So you got some job diversification there. Uh, Amazon Lex exposes two SDKs. You've got runtime. This is what uh, uh, users actually uh, send content to. You then have the model building service. This lets you query for data about your bots, programmatically deploy bots. Uh, you'll see both examples of these in the demo. OK, so with that, uh, we're going to try and build an enterprise voice-enabled application. Um, to start, we'll be in the uh, Amazon Lex console. I'll create a custom bot here, uh, call it uh, reInvent Live. 
output voice. So this is, uh, if you want to have voice interactions in your app, this is the voice that will communicate back. Um, OK, and uh, set a session timeout. And there we have it. So we've now got a bot, uh, but a bot needs intents. And if you remember, an intent is like a form. So we're going to uh, create an intent. As a hypothetical use case, let's say I have appointments in DynamoDB. I've decided to roll my own calendar. And I want to be able to have a voice command that will create a record in DynamoDB for me. So I'm going to have a create appointment voice command. So I'll name it. You can tell I've been uh, practicing. All right, so we've created the intent. But now we need slots for this intent. So these are the input fields that Lex is attempting to actually get from the user. So I'm creating appointments. Uh, date would be useful for an appointment. And uh, I'm going to select Amazon's pre-built date slot type. Uh, these are really powerful. They're very good at converting human vernacular, like next Tuesday, into the appropriate date formatted in a numeric way that makes sense. Um, then the prompt, this is what Lex will ask the user if it does not yet have this information. So you get to specify follow-up questions that Lex can ask. OK, next, I'm going to specify a, a time. Uh, so appointments with a date aren't very useful if they don't have a time. And I'll uh, pick the time slot type uh, that Amazon has created. All right. And the prompt will be, what time? And I'll uh, make both fields required. Now we're ready to specify utterances. These are what users can say to kick off the voice command. So uh, one that makes sense is create an appointment. Right? So uh, if, if a user specifies create appointment, it will then ask what date and what time. Um, However, uh-oh. OK, uh-oh. Well, luckily, I have one of these in a, in a bad, yeah. So we got back up. What, what I've done here, this is the same one you saw earlier, except uh, Amazon exposes the capacity to have these curly braces around keywords. This means the user can specify the slot in the initial utterance. So a user can say, Create an appointment for tomorrow at 3 p.m. So a single voice command, and it uh, completes the intent. What you then choose is to, uh, you can either return the slot values to the client. This is what you'll see in our demo. But you could also send it up to a Lambda if you choose um, to do some server-side logic with it. Uh, so normally, what you would do is build and publish. Uh, that can take a couple minutes. Uh, but luckily, this is my pre-built one. So we're, uh, we're good there. So now, what would an integration with this look like potentially in your app? What I'm going to do is, uh, through our product, Squid, I'm going to show uh, some integration capabilities that you could have with Lex. So I'll uh, name it reInvent Live. It's also very important you log into your applications beforehand. OK, creating the page. Now, Squid exposes, uh, if, if you'll remember, I said our hypothetical is I've got appointments in DynamoDB. Um, so Squid exposes a number of different data sources. I'm going to be connecting to Dynamo. And uh, the table I care about are my appointments. All right, pulls in our fields. So I'm going to create a uh, table. So just to make sure everything's still uh, kosher, I'm going to preview the page. Yes, OK, we're pulling in our appointments from Dynamo. Now I'm ready to begin configuring voice for our page. So I enable voice. I select the Lex data source I've pre-configured beforehand. You just give us some AWS credentials with the appropriate permissions. We handle the rest from there. Uh, you need two things to fire an API request through Lex. You need the uh, bot name and the uh, bot alias. You can think of an alias as a published uh, version number. 
This allows you to continue to iterate on your bot without breaking your previously existing integrations. So my alias name is Demo. The bot name is reInvent. So back over here, reInvent, Demo. All right, and with that, our uh, page is voice enabled. So now I'm going to wire up interactions. So say a user does the create appointment intent, now I'm going to wire up logic to happen in the client in response to that. So how we do this is uh, when creating a, uh, an action sequence, you specify this is voice triggered. And uh, we pull in all of your intents in theory. And uh, let me check. I may have uh, had a typo. Oh, capital D. And now it uh, pulls in uh, the intents from your bot. When I select the intent, uh, slot values are auto-populated uh, as inputs to these actions. It pulls in your utterances as example commands. We'll use this in the UI to show a user what they can say. So as you add capabilities, this will show to the user automatically. OK, and now uh, what I want this action to do when it happens I want to create a new row in the DynamoDB model I've configured earlier. And then I want to update a field on that row to correspond to the slot values uh, that I will receive back from Lex. How you pull in uh, these values, uh, Squid uses a merge syntax formatted like so. So uh, to get the date slot, I, I format it like this. And then uh, I want this to be a ISO string, so I'm going to uh, put a T in the middle there. And then uh, input dot time. OK, and with that, we should be ready to go with a voice command. Assuming the ambient noise doesn't just totally cave my computer's capacity to recognize voice. Oh, sorry, one more thing. I need to add a, uh, I'm just going to add a button to the uh, page to uh, actually kick off listening to voice commands. So this will, Handle all the browser permissionings. So listen for voice command. I specify the silence time. This is how long it waits for silence before it packages your audio and sends it. Say two seconds. OK, now I believe we are ready. Create an appointment for tomorrow at 3 PM. Not quite. Create an appointment for tomorrow at 3 PM. All right, I'm going to try this with headphones. See, we've come prepared for every contingency here at Squid. Create an appointment for tomorrow at 3 PM. Create an appointment for tomorrow at 3 PM. Fingers crossed, everyone. I'm really hoping you can see this. Oh, well, here's what we'll do. I'm going to actually cup it against my face. Create an appointment for tomorrow at 3 PM. Hey, all right. So in uh, about 10-ish minutes, you've seen me uh, give voice capabilities to an app that previously just didn't exist. We're pulling in data from Dynamo. Zero code. And I would like to stress that, no code. Um, so uh, you can try Squid for yourself, uh, our product. To learn more about the uh, Squid product, you can visit our booth at uh, 1540. It's located in that direction. Or you can visit uh, squid.com slash awslex to learn more about what you can do with voice. And uh, thank you for coming. I, I'd be happy to answer your questions in the booth. So.